Hey everybody, welcome back to the 80 Slashers YouTube channel. In this video, we will be looking at the top 10 slashers that took in the most money at the box office during the 1980s. Now, in, uh, in an earlier video, uh, we looked at the, the 80 slashers that had the, the, the biggest budgets. And um, yeah, that was a fun video. I liked looking at that kind of that kind of that sort of information. So I thought I would do um, you know a similar one, um, looking at the box offices. Uh, now, uh, in the biggest budget video, um, although I found there were uh, a few surprises that made you know the, uh, the top ten, for the most part, uh, the films that you expected to see on that list were were pretty much there. So, not surprisingly, uh, the list of films that we're about to discuss um, in, in terms of box office returns will be even more predictable than the ones on the budget list. Um, just, you know, because this, is, this, this list will mostly be dominated by, um, you know, the, the, the franchise films within the, within the 80s slasher genre. So, you know, which films uh, will rank where? Well, that's, that's what we're going to take a look at here. So um, but, but let's, just, let's just get right into it. And uh, let's start off by looking at uh, number 10. All right, so coming at number 10, from 1981, we have Graduation Day which took in a total of $23,894,000 at the box office. Pretty good. Now, this um, is the only film in, on this list that is actually not a franchise film, which, um, which is good to see. You know, I'm glad that at least one made it on here. Um, you know, and so I guess due to that, I guess this, this is kind of the, uh, the surprise film. Um, you just, just, you know, just on the basis of how well it did on, um, you know, no support from like previous entries in, in, in the franchise. So, um, I, I've always said looking at graduation day that this, this film, just because of how well it did, that this film was kind of like the right film at the right time. You know, this was released in 1981, which is, you know, the the pinnacle of the genre. You know, the 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 desire and the craze for more of these films was never as high as it was in 1981. Um, you know, this one had a like a holiday themed title, you know, after Halloween, then after Friday the 13th. Um, you know, these slasher films that have that kind of um, that, that, you know, just, just that holiday theme hook attached to them, um, I, I feel brought people in and, you know, like I said, in 1981 at this time, a film titled Graduation Day, watching the trailer, you saw that it had like a sports theme. Um, yeah, I, I think it's just, it, it's just one of those films that just kind of landed at just the right moment and it just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of caught a lot of attention from people so uh yeah number 10 graduation day um like i said glad to see it on here all right let's uh let's move on and take a look at number nine all right so coming to number nine we have a nightmare on elm street uh from 1984 uh, this took in a total of $25,504,513. Uh, now, you know, it, it's, look, looking back at this now in hindsight, you're like, oh, of course this did well. But, you know, in 84, this was, you know, a new, it wasn't a franchise at this point. This was a new, um, a new slasher film, but it was a new type of slasher film. And I think that's what kind of, got the the not the, the franchise going for this film you know um you know of course this was the introduction of freddy krueger and i think the, the the thing that really made this film is 
successful as it was, was was mostly a product of word of mouth. You know, people started seeing this film. And, you know, at this point in 84, they had seen a, a, a few films with Michael Myers and a few films with Jason Voorhees. And they were very similar, you know. Um, but, you know, this this idea of this new killer coming out who was funny, who had like little snippy one-liners, but he was killing people in their dreams. Um, it, it was just a new concept. The, the idea behind A Nightmare on Elm Street was just, uh, it just really grabbed people's imaginations, I think. And um, yeah, it, it's no surprise that it went on to, you know, become one of the biggest horror franchises of all time. And uh, yeah, it started right here. So yeah, number nine. Um, I'm surprised it's not a little higher, but we'll we'll see as we go on here. But um, yeah, a good, a fairly strong debut for the for the franchise. All right, let's uh, move on and take a look at number eight. All right, so coming to number eight from 1981, we have Halloween 2, which took in 25,533,818 dollars at the box office. Uh, yeah, so again, this is no surprise on here. This is the only Halloween film that that made the list, so um, kind of surprising, I guess. But it's 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 not surprising that this this is the one because. In my opinion, that this is the best of the '80s um, Halloween films. Uh, that's a slasher. We're not talking about Halloween three, um, but yeah, you know, this is this came two, you know, two two or three years after the original in 1978. So it, it's no surprise, you know, people loved the original John Carpenter film, and you know. 81 again, the height of the height of the genre, um, and you know we get to see. Michael Myers again, and we get to see Laurie Strode again, Jamie Lee Curtis, um, you know, Donald Pleasance. Um, yeah, I'm sure the hype for this was was pretty big. You know, the return of Michael Myers, it must have just been um, very exciting, you know, like, like some of these films, these sequels come after like year after year after year, they put them out and it, it kind of doesn't give you time to build up that anticipation. Um, you know, two to three years is a long time for waiting for a follow-up to Halloween. So, yeah, I, this is kind of a no-brainer. You know, $25 million just uh, made just a little bit more than the original Nightmare on Elm Street film. Like, uh, about $30,000 more. So, pretty pretty uh, equal with, with that film. Um, but yeah, so yeah, kind of... Kind of good to see a Halloween film on here. So coming at number eight, Halloween 2. All right, let's take a look at number seven. All right, so coming at number seven, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge from 1985. And this took in a total of 29999000 Two hundred and thirteen dollars, so basically almost thirty million dollars. And um, yeah, like again, like this is, you know, the obviously the the first film, you know, made twenty five million, um, very successful. This film was put out, like I said, a year later. Um, so they really seemed to to want to capitalize on the success of the first film. So they, you know, they put out this sequel pretty quick um and you know i'm not surprised obviously that that it did well i'm a little surprised it didn't do better uh you know just the, just because of the strength of of the first film um now again like, like i said earlier it, it this may be um a case where you know it, it was released too soon they didn't let the anticipation build up enough um, you know, who knows, but either way, it, it did well, it did better than the first film, um, and, you know, obviously, that's just a recipe to, to keep creating these films in the, in the franchise is, is, is what they did, but, um, yeah, coming at just under 30 million dollars, um, pretty good showing for, um, a nightmare film. All right, let's, uh, move on to number six.
All right, so coming at number six, we have Friday the 13th, the final chapter from 1984, uh, which brought in a total of $32,980,880. So yeah, number six, we finally get our first uh, Friday the 13th film. And, um, you know, knowing what's, you know, coming on the rest of this list, um, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised it didn't make more as, you know, I, I, I don't know, in hindsight, I guess, but I, I, I view this film as, you know, one of the biggest in the entire franchise, you know, at this point it was that the Friday franchise was, was at its peak, you know, and this was, this was a huge film. This was a big event, you know, being advertised as like the, the final film, the death, you know, the, the death of Jason, um, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I was surprised that this wasn't the, um, you know, the, the highest, the most successful Friday film in the franchise. Um, just for, I don't know, just for whatever reason, it, if I was, you know, I, I was to guess, I, I would have, I would have guessed this was number one, but it, it's not. Um, but um, I'm, it's really glad to, to see it on here because this, this is a great film. One of, one of the best in the franchise. Um, one of the, the, the best made. Um, it, it just has everything that, that the slasher genre at this point was was you know, supposed to have. You know, this is like the, the, the stereotypical 80s slasher. And um, yeah, so, you know, 32, 33 million dollars. Um, pretty good haul for for a little 80 slasher so i'm certainly glad to see it on here all right let's uh let's take a look at number five all right so coming to number five we have friday the 13th part three from 1982 uh, and that took in a total of $36,690,067. So yeah, as I just mentioned um, with the final chapter, um, I, I'm, I'm surprised part three made more money than the final chapter. Um, that's that, you know, that indicates that the franchise was um, on a downward angle or you know it was it wasn't as successful as you know it was declining um which which is surprising because for me in terms of quality and enjoyment the the franchise peaked probably at at you know the final chapter but whatever regardless you know um now this could all be because Friday the 13th part 3 was in 3D so I don't know if Obviously, that's an extra, um, you know, uh, a curiosity factor, you know? This was a time, you know, 82, there, there was a lot of these 3D films coming out. There's like a little 3D revival in the early 80s, so I'm sure that played a part. I don't know if um, they were charging a little extra for 3D tickets, like they, they, they do nowadays. I don't know if that was the case in the early 80s, if, if, if a movie ticket was the same price back then as a regular 3D. I, I don't know. Um, so... It, if so, maybe that, you know, played the extra, you know, it, it only made like $4 million more than the final chapter. So they're re 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 relatively close. Um, but yeah, I don't know, but like, I, I love part three. I think this is fantastic. So I'm super glad to see it's, um, it, it's, it's on this list, um, ahead of, you know, some of the other films that we've mentioned already. It's uh, definitely deserving. Um, yeah, so, yeah, number five, Friday the 13th, part three. All right, let's take a look at number four. All right, so coming to number four, we have Friday the 13th, 1980. Uh, took in a total of $39,754,601. dollars yeah, so this is the third Friday film in a row uh, on this list, and you know this is the one that started it all. This is, you know, um, basically the first eighty slasher made. You know, there's, you know, there is uh, Twelve Good Night was technically in my in my estimation the first eighty slasher, but you know Friday Thirteenth was was the one that started that kicked off the genre. Um, and yeah, like this, th these numbers, this is just super impressive for 
you know, a film that was made. It, it's it's not an expensive film. Like there wasn't, it had a very small budget. So profitability, this film made a ton. And it's, again, like the, um, um, like the first Nightmare on Elm Street film, this, this, this was all about word of mouth. You know, this, this film hit just at the right time, you know. Um, people had seen Halloween. Halloween was super successful, really did well. And this was the first film that really capitalized on the success of Halloween. You know, other films tried. They just didn't get the formula. They just didn't get it exactly right until Friday the 13th hit. And they showed, um, this is what you need to do to be successful. And and they hit it out of the park. And it was recognized. And it was just, yeah, word of mouth. Just it spread. And people, this film just caught on fire. It was so successful. And, um, it, it, it launched a subgenre with, you know, with, with the, the 80 slasher type with f copying the formula, the, the tropes, all, all the things this, this film had it all. It's where it all started. Um, it, it really was like one of those, you know, magic in a bottle type of films. It's just right place, right time, and just the right type of film. Um, so you know, this, this Friday the 13th is the most, um, it is the, the film in the franchise that made the most money. This this is it. There's no more Friday the 13th films. 39 million, almost 40 million dollars. Um, this was the peak, and it was the first one, which is kind of weird. You know, usually it's um, it goes the other way. You know, you, you you get a good film, and the sequels make a little more money because the, the anticipation of seeing more films. You know, it's just the way it usually works. Um, but interesting in the case of Friday the 13th it was you know the first was was the best and everything after was you know trying to to catch up to the success of the first one but um yeah coming at number four I you know I guess I like it here you know I, I this is my favorite 80 slasher so uh you know of course I, I think it should be number one because I think it's the best one but uh number four is I'm, I'm fine with it because you know the next three I you know we'll see there, there's no real surprise but um yeah, number four, Friday the 13th. Uh, love to see it here. All right, let's 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 move on and take a look at number three. All right, so count number three, we have Child's Play, 1988. Um, this film took in $44,196,684. Um, yeah, again, like, you know... In hindsight, it's no surprise that this film is on here. This this was another film that um, it it just it kind of like I guess I guess you could say it's another word of mouth film. It just um, it, it just did really well. This is one of the biggest uh, buzzes in in the horror genre within the eighties. You know when this film came out, it's just um, it just is it was everywhere. Like Chucky was was the new name in you know, horror. And at this point, 88, we hadn't really gotten a, a new name. You know, we had, you know, Michael Myers in the seventies and then 19, you know, 81, you know, really Jason Voorhees made his appearance, um, you know, 84, um, Freddy Krueger. And we didn't really have another big icon until 88 here. And, uh, you know, the name Chucky came out and, you know, it, it, it's just a good idea for a film. I think the people who made this film, they spent a lot of money that this had, this is, this was one of the films that had one of the biggest budgets. And at this point it wasn't a franchise. It was just a leap of faith that they, they, the studio obviously believed in this film that in the concept of a killer doll that was smart talking, you know, had some little one liners like Freddie. They obviously knew what they had. They they put the money behind it, and it paid off. It did really, really well. Um, I think, again, it was the right type of film at the right time, because at this point in the 80s, you know, the 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 stereotypical Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees type slashers were kind of being left behind in, you know, for the the Freddy Krueger type movies. Like, the you know, people wanted their horror films with a little comedy, a little pop culture references kind of fun stuff you know and um that's what child's play was so yeah it's it's no surprising it, it did so well and like i said it was it was it was it was big it was big in the eighties. i remember this i i was um i remember this this film was all over the place people just couldn't get enough of it so yeah come at number three child's play all right let's take a look at number two All 
All right, so coming to number two, we have a Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors from 1987. Uh, this took in 44793222 million seven hundred and ninety three thousand two hundred and twenty two dollars at the box office yeah once again no surprise um you know like i said earlier with child's play at this point in the 80s um you know freddy krueger had basically taken over the horror genre uh just the you know the mix of you know the horror elements with the comedy elements you know the, the like the supernatural um vibe was kind of a thing that was that people wanted to see kind of played with people's imaginations more than just the the regular you know stock and hunt type um slasher um these for whatever reason at this time these types of films just really spoke to people and you know the the, the studios that were making these films just did an amazing job of of marketing these films um, you know, Freddy Krueger was, was everywhere, you know, like, like your Halloween costumes, your, the toys, the, like the t-shirt, just everything. He was just like TV commercials. Um, yeah, Freddy Krueger was, was just everywhere, 87, 88. And, you know, these were the years that, you know, were the financial high point of the genre. Um, without a doubt, like, you know, 87, 88 were the years that made the most money and it was, uh, clearly it was baked, banked off of mostly this franchise so um f you know i may not agree with it you know i've made it very clear on this channel i'm i have not always been the biggest fan of the nightmare on elm street franchise uh but you know at this point in the 80s um freddy krueger was what the people wanted and um the box office returns definitely uh, indicated indicated that so yeah number two uh nightmare on elm street three dream warriors uh all right let's uh let's move on and take a look at the the 80 slasher that made the most money at the box office during during the 80s All right, so yeah, coming at number one, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street for The Dream Master from 1988, which took in $49,369,899. So basically almost $50 million. Uh, again, everything I said for, you know, um, The Dream Dream Warriors basically applies for this. Um, no surprise, like I said, you know, this film came out in 1988, and, you know, Freddy was, was still king. Ba basically, um, I think what really did it for, for part four was the, you know, the, the fever pitch, the, the, the desire for Freddy films really um, was at a peak for, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street part three. And the fact that that film was was good, it, it was, you know, one of the better films in the franchise. Um, it, um, you know, it struck that, Part three struck that perfect balance between, you know, comedy and horror almost. Um, especially in the 80s. You know, looking back now, it's, you know, I may have some more issues with that. But at the time, it was viewed as a, a, as a really good film. So it was successful. Obviously, it was successful. I, when that came out, it was the most successful um, 80s slasher up to that point with, you know, almost $45 million. So be, because of the success of, of Nightmare 3 and, you know, people... Like I said, liked liked the film. You know, when part four came out, the anticipation was was even greater, and people they people just couldn't get enough. And you know, unfortunately, um, I think you know part four is is the film, um, in my opinion, where you know the, the 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 silly aspects of the film started to become more obvious. You know, there was some. There were some elements of that in part three, but part four is really when the cartoony Freddy Krueger started to come out. Um, and, you know, people didn't know until after they watched it, but they, everyone went, and everyone went and watched part four. And, you know, after this film, uh, th you know, this was the peak. There was a big drop-off. Part five, not only in quality, which there was, part five and part six, huge drop-off in quality. But um, in terms of box uh, box office success as well, um, this was this was the peak and it, it went down from here. Um, but you know, 
like I said, at, at, at no point in the 80s was there more of a desire to see a slasher film than there was for A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master. So, yeah, that this film um, takes the title for most successful 80s slasher. Like it or, or you know, not like the film, um, regardless, it, it, it did the best at that at that time. So, yeah, yeah, if, if, if we just take a quick look at the, you know, the, the, the top 10 films here, um, like I said earlier, it, it, it's, it's, it's pretty, um, dominated by these, these franchise films, you know, with the exception of Graduation Day, and I guess if you want to, you know, Child's Play at the time wasn't a franchise, but, you know, it, it has become that since then, but I guess you could classify that, um, you know, not as a franchise film at that point, but basically this is all Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, you know, and Halloween. So nothing too exciting, nothing too uh, unpredictable, you know. Uh, these were the films that just uh, dominated um, the genre at this point. But um, it's, you know, the, the, the range from, you know, 49 million at the top all the way down to 23 million is... Um, you know, it, it seems like a big range, but it's really not. Like, you know, it, it it's, they're all fairly successful. You know, a lot of these 80 slasher films at the time, you know, were lucky to make a million dollars at the box office. You know, some of these films, like The Prowler, I think, made, you know, around a million dollars. Um, so the fact that Graduation Day made 23 million really speaks to the level of success it had in term, you know, in within this genre, you know, of course, when you look at films nowadays, you know, these Marvel superhero movies that are making hundreds of millions of dollars, um, this isn't super impressive, but again, it's, it's a different time, it's a different film genre, and, um, I, I think these films, um, speak to, you know, the popularity of the genre, um, at this time in, in the eighties, and especially for these, these franchises that had these iconic villains that kept reoccurring. So, um, I don't know. I, I, I find this stuff interesting. Um, I, I just, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a pretty solid list. Um, and, uh, I don't know, just kind of an interesting thing. That's it, guys. That's a that's a look at the you know top ten, um, you know eighty slasher films that you know did the best at the box office. So, once again, thanks uh, thanks for uh, watching the videos, and um, yeah, until next time. All right, see ya.